Hi everyone, it's Bettina. Today is Friday, February the 17th, 2012. So this video is going to talk about an IC chip, and the IC chip is called an S3529. S3529, and mine's uh, version B. What it is, it's a chip uh, made by AMI, and it's a, it's a high-pass filter, and it's programmable. I found it in my parts bin. I thought, oh, here comes my cat. I thought it was uh, an interesting chip to uh, look at and experiment with. I uh, went onto the internet, I got the application notes, and I said, you know what, I can do this. So I actually uh, made a little bit of a circuit on my breadboard. So let me get the camera out of the way for my cat. She loves this area of her. Hi, Mona. Oh, don't show your bum. That's not very nice. There's my cat. She's investigating what's going on. <laughs> what we're going to find out later is, is my cat, and actually my other cat too, does not like particular frequencies. They start to uh, get a little edgy. I'm not too sure what's up, but it's uh, maybe one of their... Uh, meow frequencies, I don't know. Anyway, okay, Mona, you have to go. Let's go, 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 go out of the way. I have to show everybody what, what I'm doing here. Okay, let's get you out of the way. There we go. All right, let's get back to uh, brass tacks here. All right, so let me repeat. The chip that I'm experimenting with is, uh, is a 3529B. It's a programmable high-pass filter. Now there is a companion chip, it's the S3528B, which is below that, but I won't show you that. And that's the low pass filter, programmable. I experimented a lot with that chip, but it turns out that I blew them all up, so I have to be more careful next time. And uh, all I was left was the 3529, and I only had, well I had two of those, and I actually blew one of those up too. So not very good, bad me. But I will be getting a 3528, and uh, what I plan on doing is building a ba band pass filter and uh, maybe even a notch filter. So, anyway, let's talk about this particular chip. So what it does is it allows us to actually put audio signals, and this chip is only meant for audio signals. However, uh, I believe the top frequency is somewhere in the 20 kilohertz range, which you can uh, you can pass, uh, and then cut off everything else. So what we're going to do is we're I, I'm sure a lot of you already know, but a low pass filter, sorry, a high pass filter, what it does is it, uh, let me draw this here on the graph kind of thing, and this is frequency, and this is amplitude. What it's going to do is it's actually going to um, pass high frequencies and block low frequencies. So theoretically, we can do something like this, and maybe this is something like uh, 1800 hertz and all the rest of it, this stuff here, uh, this signal here will be blocked. So that's what we're, we're trying to do with this particular filter. We, we block the low signals and we'll let the high pass uh, signals come through. And that's exactly what a high pass filter is. All right, so let's get back to the actual chip itself. There it is. Here's the internal workings of it. I know you probably can't see too well. It's, uh, it's an 18 pin chip. Mona, stay away. Mona, stay away. I'm going to bring my cat out again. Sorry, folks. Ouch. Mona, pop it. I know, I know. It's a tough life. All right, let me give you the, uh, the circuit that I worked with. Uh, I know you probably can't see this very well. But if you get the application notes, just go on the Internet and download them. You'll, you'll find them. It's AMI is the actual manufacturer of the chip. It's probably about a 20-year-old chip by now, by the way. So there is the uh, typical uh, circuit configuration to use. And you can see that so these uh, uh, pins here, these are your data inputs, and this is how we program them. There's f uh, six inputs, and we just put a high or a low, and depending on the actual sequence of the uh, high or low, the uh, frequency, the f uh, cutoff frequency will be determined. So what we have here is we just have a little bit of an op-amp circuit in the front here, uh, so you can put a unity gain type um, op-amp configuration, or if you want to put a little bit of gain in, you can. Um, my test set actually is really, really good. I'm going to show you that shortly. Um, so I can adjust the output levels into the uh, actual high-pass filter and play around with it. But uh, depending on what your signal source is, you might have to adjust this op-amp. If you uh, drive it too high, it's, it's going to clip. You'll find that in your output. And this is your output circuitry here. And, um, and there are some calculations. I think I used uh, uh, two similar values for the resistors. I can't remember what they are right now. And then I put a capacitor out there just to smooth things out and to lessen the uh, spikes on the samples. Uh, so anyway, that's what we do. We input the audio signal through it. It gets uh, filtered and the output comes here. Uh, what I plan on doing is probably hooking up an audio amplifier type chip on the end here and um, 
what I want to do is actually build um, a, a notch filter so I can eliminate a high-pitched uh, sound I've got coming out, or sorry, out of my um, my radio. When I turn my radio on, my AM radio, I uh, and my computer at the same time, there's actually a squealing noise. So what I'm going to do is take the output from the radio, the speaker output, and um, might have to attenuate it a little bit, put it into the input of this, and then filter out whatever that frequency is. It's audible, that's all I know, and but I'll find out what the frequency is, and then the output will, of course, be the output uh, to a speaker or audio amp, and that'll give me a nice uh, tone-free uh, audio listening when I've got my computer on down in the basement. All right, anyway, let's get down to brass tacks. Here's the circuit. Ta-da! Okay, I know it's only on a breadboard. I plan on putting this on a more permanent type of a setup, probably on a PC board of some sort. But I'm just experimenting with it right now, so uh, that's why I wanted to show you, because I'm all excited. So this chip requires plus and minus 5 volts, and there's my plus and minus 5 volt power supply that I cobbled together. It's quite nice. Thank you very much. All right, so let's. Uh, this thing is powered up as we speak, and let me go over to the test set. So what I have here is I have um, I have a, a CXR telecom test set. This is used uh, in the telephone company business. I happen to pick one up at a surplus store for a fairly nice price. So what I can do is I can actually change the frequency uh, here, and it's got a nice uh, output scope on it and got levels in the whole bit. So I'm just going to sweep it. It's got an automatic sweep and I'll show you the actual high pass filter on the actual screen. Hopefully you can see that. You can see the sharp drop off. And let me do that manually. And right about there we start dropping off. Right around there. And if we look at the frequency it's approximately 15, 50, 15, 30, 15, 25. It all depends on what you take as your reference point, your cutoff frequency. And if you don't have a particular sweep generator, audio sweep generator, as fancy as this, you can still use your oscilloscope. So I'm showing you the output here, and you'll see that the actual amplitude drops, and the frequency, of course, drops too. Uh, but once you notice the drop, then you know you've reached your cutoff frequency, so it stays the same in terms of level or amplitude. But when I come to that cutoff frequency, you can see it start to drop right about there. So two options on how to actually look and uh, read your frequency cutoff. All right, so what determines... I'm just going to put this low frequency so we don't have to listen to it. What determines the frequency? Well, I said to you before that there's uh, some data inputs to the actual chip. And I've kind of enlarged it here. Uh, there is a chart. In the back, or on these application notes. Let me try to get those for you. Right there, there we go. And I know you can't read it, but it gives you the hex value on the left hand column. Uh, there's a divider ratio thing. Oh, by the way, that divider ratio relates to uh, the frequency that you use on your uh, chip. This uh, application note just requires a color burst uh, frequency, or a crystal, 3.57, uh, whatever it is, 3.578 or whatever. And um, 3.58, sorry. <clears throat> So these divider ratios are calculated based on that. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, uh, the, the third column, it's your cutoff frequency. So right now, I have the data bits set for 1110 and 10, and then data bit 6 and 7 doesn't matter, so there, there is no input, so you just put an X there. And what are we left with? Well, if you remember your hex to binary conversion, um, a hex is divided into four bits, and this left-hand portion here equates to one, and then this right-hand portion here equates to a seven. So my value is one seven. And if we look on the chart, which you can't see, it equates to 1535. So 1535 hertz is the cutoff frequency. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Oh, there we go, right there, 1535-ish. And that is our cutoff frequency. So it works. So I can actually change the, uh, the, uh, the, data bit, the data bit inputs, which are these guys here. I've just put them out to the plus and uh, ground uh, for my controls, and adjust the cutoff frequency. So anyway, like I said, applications are probably just uh, local in my little lab here and I've got a radio over there I probably want to just